Gail, it's Kay from the Literary Apothecary, and first and foremost, Happy New Year, Happy 2022. I'm wishing you all many, many amazing reads in the new year and lots and lots of book mail. So now that we're in the new year, people are asking me, what was your favorite read in 2021? And y'all know how much I hate choosing favorites. I just can't do it. When I have to choose a favorite, I end up picking several because I can't just pick one. Um, but then this weekend, as I was doing laundry, I was watching Michael Nip's video where he did a book battle of all of the books that he read in 2021 to choose his favorite. And I thought, that is such a fun idea. I'm going to do that for mine. So I took all of the books that I read in 2021 minus one book that was like a business book and was just totally unrelated. Um, and also, I also took out all of the DNFs in the books that I hadn't finished yet. Everything else went into this random bracket generator that randomized all of my seeds and all of my matchups. And so this is just round one of the book battle of 2021. Um, I may do this in a couple different videos. I may just put it all into one video. Depends on how long it gets and how much I talk. Um, but this is round one and so these are all completely randomized. The matches are completely random. Some of these are going to be easier to choose than others. For the most part, I'm just going to go on my gut instinct with these choices. And I'm going to kind of, for the most part, go with how I felt coming away from the book. Um, so our first matchup is a doozy. That is The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune and the first book in the Outlander series by Diana Gabaldon. Y'all, this is probably maybe the hardest one I had to choose. And I'll, I'll say this also just as a very quick side note. I haven't made these choices ahead of time. These You are seeing my choices as they're happening. I just did the matchups and wrote them down so I have them for this video. But I didn't think in advance who's going to win which round. So. This is all completely random. You're seeing my reactions as they come. Let's get to it. House in the Cerulean Sea and Outlander, match number one. Wow, okay, so y'all know how much I loved the House in the Cerulean Sea. That was definitely one of my favorites of last year. Those kids in that book just made me feel so freaking much. Um, but you also know how much I love Outlander and the whole series and everything that surrounds it and those characters are just so amazing that storyline is just so well done book after book after book but and here is a first maybe first shocker for a lot of people um, if we're going by just the book itself and not the series not where it lands in the series I'm gonna give this round the house in the Cerulean Sea because I came away from that book wanting to reread it instantly, wanting it to be a reread every year. And for the Outlander book, I did not like Claire at all in that book, and I just wanted to get to the next book. So, round one goes to House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Clue. Next matchup we have is The Library of the Unwritten by AJ Hackwith with up against The Return of the King by J.R.L. Tolkien. Now, I absolutely loved The Library of the Unwritten. It was such a fun book. I treated it like a standalone because my friend Abby said book two was totally different and not worth reading. Um, and it felt like it was a complete story in itself. And I absolutely loved the characters and the premise of the book. The characters in these books came to life and helped save the library. Um, and I absolutely loved it, but does it beat the third and final book in the Lord of the Rings series by J.R.L. Tolkien? Uh, I'm going to have to go with a classic here and give this run to The Return of the King. Because y'all, those hobbits are, they live the life. The hobbit life is for me and I cannot go above J.R.R. Tolkien, the king of fantasy, the place where a lot of modern fantasy started. Um, so our next 
Speaking of classics, our next matchup is a matchup of classics, which is so exciting to me. So first we have Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy up against The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Dumas. Now, this one is a hard one because I really enjoyed both books and they both surprised me a lot. Um, but they also both took up a good chunk of my reading time. They both lasted more than one month um, and they were very, very, very entertaining reads. I really enjoyed them a lot, um, but I think I'm going to go with the revenge story here and The Count of Monte Cristo because that audiobook just had me wanting to know what happened next, what happened next, what happened next, what happened next. Um, I was entertained by Anna Karenina, but not at the level of The Count of Monte Cristo. So this one I'm giving to The Count of Monte Cristo. Now our next matchup is kind of a weird one. We've got The Return of the Sorcerer um, by Clark Ashton Smith versus The Adventures of Balto. So Return of the Sorcerer was a collection of short stories. It was horror, it was fantasy, a little bit of sci-fi, a little bit of humor for me. It was a buddy read with two of my very great friends, Stephanie and Christy. Um, whereas The Adventures of Balto was a kid's story. It was for this very fun vlog that I did about dog sleds and dog sled racing and it had a lot of nostalgia for me because as a kid I absolutely loved dog sled racing. I wanted to know everything about dog sled racing and I did a rod. Um, but I think I'm gonna go with the return of the sorcerer here because this was just so weird and so crazy that no, I, it can't go, Balto can't beat it. Our next matchup we have The Crown of Feathers book one by Nikki Pau Pareto versus um, Bloody Rose which is book two in the band series by Nicholas Eames and this one is a tough one because I absolutely loved Crown of Feathers, but y'all know how much I love Nicholas Eames and the band and those stories were just, <laughs> um, I gotta go with my boy, my boy Nick here, Nicholas Eames, he was fantastic on our live show and his writing is just so unique and different and I gotta give this one to Bloody Rose, it, it just has to happen. Next matchup, we have The Fellowship of the Ring, book one in the Lord of the Rings trilogy, of course, by J.R.L. Tolkien versus Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. This is such a hard one to do. Oh my God. This one, this is going to be one of the harder ones because we've got the classic J.R.L. Tolkien again. And y'all know how much I loved listening to that. And we have Skyward, which gives me, Skyward gave me my absolute favorite Brandon Sanderson character. That's Mbot. And I really, really enjoyed reading that book. I still claim to this day after a couple Sanderson reads that Skyward is my favorite Sanderson. It's gonna be, but, I can't put it over Lord of the Rings. Like, I know it's going to be hard because I read all of the Lord of the Rings last year, um, but it just can't happen. And maybe that means that Brandon Sanderson doesn't make it past round one. We'll see. I don't even know. There are some books that got to buy into round two. I don't even know what books those are. I didn't look ahead. So maybe he has a book reserved in round two. But this one, again, I've got to give it to Gerald Tolkien and the Lord of the Fellowship of the Ring. Next up, oh, this one is an easy one, I've got to say. Um, we have Rise of the Magics, which is book three in a Nora Roberts series versus the fifth season by N.K. Jemisin, which is book one in the Broken Earth trilogy. And this one is easy for me because y'all 
the fifth season was completely life-changing for me and Rise of the Magics was just okay for me. So this one definitely goes to the fifth season because that one, I came away with that with my mind absolutely blown and I can't wait to read book two and three. Our next matchup, we're returning back to the Outlander books for this one. We've got Voyager, which is Outlander book three versus Mansfield Park, which is a Jane Austen novel. Um, this one I know, okay, as much as I love Jane Austen, this one has to go to Voyager because in Voyager, we get some major plot points that move the series forward. A lot happens in this book and it was just so groundbreaking and we get multiple point of views that we hadn't gotten before. We get new characters. Um, one of my very favorite Outlander characters. So this one has to go to Voyager number Outlander number three. Next matchup. Oh, this is a hard one. This is one. Is this one's a hard one? Fire is Keeper's Daughter by Angelina Boleyn versus The Mask of Mirrors by M. A. Carrick, which is book one in the Rook and the Rose series. Yeah, this one is hard. I absolutely loved The Fire's Keeper's Daughter. I recommended it to tons and tons of people. I shouted my love from the rooftops. I bought the book on a whim because my friend Charmaine absolutely loved it and would not stop talking about it. Um, and I complete. I was blo just taken away by this was a debut novel, a YA, and it just felt like something totally different than ever anything I'd have ever read before. And then you put that up next to The Mask of Mirrors, which, yes, it's book one in a series. It's written by a duo author, a duo set of authors that, holy cow, you could not tell who, when they changed spaces. It felt like it was written by one author and it's become one of my favorite series of the year. How do I want to rate this? I'm going to give this one actually, no, to, okay. I'm going to give this one to Firekeeper's Daughter because that one just completely blew me away. I absolutely loved Mask of Mirrors, but I also know that book two is around here somewhere. The Liar's Not, and I liked that one slightly more than I liked book one. So I'm going to go with Firekeeper's Daughter on this one and not change my mind. Let's move on to the next before my mind changes. Next matchup we have From Blood and Ash by Jennifer L. Armentrout versus a part portrait of the artist as a young man and this one is a easy one for me as much as I love classics James Joyce I just cannot get I listened to the audiobook which helps me a lot with a portrait portrait of the artist as a young man and it was definitely easier to understand than Ulysses but it still like I still have no idea what really happened in that book from blood and ash also kind of gave me an introduction to the fantasy romance um, supernatural kind of genre vibe and I really really loved book one in that series so this one goes to from blood and ash next matchup Ooh, this is another hard one y'all these are all so hard um, we've got the love hypothesis by Ellie Hazelworld which was a romance book it was a book of the month pick and it was a lot uh, enemies to lovers trope. It was completely, completely adorable. I absolutely loved it. Um, it was just so good. It made me, you know, believe in love again. It made me want to get back out into the dating scene. It was just so fantastic. But that is put up against The Patience of a Dead Man by Michael Clark, which is book one in that series. And that was totally different than anything I'd ever read. That gave me an introduction into the horror world, the horror books world. I hadn't really read many horror books before. I read um, Cujo like the year before that by Stephen King, but beyond that, I hadn't really read very many horror books. So this kind of opened my eye into that world and made me kind of a mini horror reader. And just because of that, I'm going to go ahead and give it to The Patience of a Dead Man, even though I absolutely loved The Love Hypothesis 
This one goes to Michael Clark. Now, our next matchup is the Blade Itself by Joe Abercrombie, which is book one in the First Law Trilogy, um, versus With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo. Now, I enjoyed both of these books, but they were both kind of four stars for me. Um, I wanted a little bit more from each of them, but I still really enjoyed the read. So this one is hard in a different sense. Um, the Blade itself kind of introduced me to the grimdark genre. It, they claim that Joe Abercrombie is like the grimdark king, um, but I didn't find it as dark as people told me it was. And I really enjoyed the humor in this, which I think surprised some people. Um, where the with the fire on high was another YA book and we get you know a lot of the common tropes I feel like a young struggling teen a young teen she's a teen mom she's trying to find her place in the world trying to find her place in her family um, trying to figure out you know the culture in the US and being a poor minority um, I really enjoyed it and our characters and I especially once I switched over to the audiobook I really enjoyed that listening to the author read her own work but I think I'd give this one to the blade itself because I enjoyed that a little bit more than I enjoyed with the fire on high with the fire on high I kind of felt more disappointed than enjoyed even though I still gave it four stars so this matchup goes to the blade itself by Joe Abercrombie which will make some people very happy our next matchup, we have just a few more here. Goes, we have Persuasion, another Jane Austen novel. Um, and that is put up against another Outlander book. Um, this is A Breath, Breath of Snow and Ashes. This is book six. So give me just one second to look up this book and see what happens in book six because this is one of those middle books that get lost in my head This one I'm actually So this one I'm going to give to Persuasion because 
this was, even though this was a reread for me, both of these books were actually rereads. Um, rereading Persuasion by Jane Austen changed my mind on that book. I wasn't a big fan when I first read it. It wasn't my favorite, but on a reread at an older age, I really, really enjoyed that. Whereas A Breath of Snow and Ashes, book six in the Outlander series, there was, you know, some important groundwork laid in this book for later books, but it also felt like some filler. So this one I'm giving to Persuasion because it changed my mind on the reread. Next up we have Empire of Black and Gold by Adrian Tchaikovsky, which is book one in the Shadows of the App series, versus Jingo. Now let me go Jingo. So Jingo is part Jingo is written by Terry Pratchett and it's part of his whole Discworld series, one of the City Watch books, and um, this is the fourth City Watch book. So I'm just reminding myself what happens in this because they all kind of melt together. Oh yes, I think this was the last City Watch book that I read. Um, I hope to read more in 2022. But this one I'm going to, even though this one explored a lot of different themes in it, this one I'm going to give to Empire of Black and Gold because I was just completely blown away by Adrian Tchaikovsky's writing. And this was kind of a fantasy sci-fi series in the details that Adrian Tchaikovsky puts into this book is just phenomenal. So this one I'm actually gonna, even though I love Terry Pratchett and his writing in the disc world, this one goes to Adrian Tchaikovsky. Our next matchup we have, oh th this one is sadly an easy one for me. Um, the, our next matchup is The Hobbit by J.R.L. Tolkien. First is Anxious People by Frederick Bachman. I, the, the Hobbit was a reread for me. I read it last year and I absolutely loved it and I read it again this year and I absolutely loved it even more than I did last year and Anxious People I was disappointed in. There was so much hype about Anxious People and I loved my the first Frederick Bachman book that I read, A Man Called Ove. The Anxious People just disappointed me. I expected more from it and I didn't get it. So this one goes to The Hobbit. Next up we have Of Blood and Bone, which is book two in that Nora Roberts series, um, Chronicles of the One, I think it's called, something like that, um, versus A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, which is book two in the Blood and Ash series. And this one is a hard one because I was actually disappointed and let down by both of these books. Um, the Kingdom of Flesh and Fire just had me annoyed at our main character for far too long. We got a lot of my favorite character in this, which I was very grateful for because he was kind of a comedic relief in this series. Um, but beyond that, I was really disappointed in this book and reluctant. I will continue the series, but I haven't yet and I finished this a long time ago. So that just shows you how much it, this book let me down. So I'm actually going to give this one to Of Blood and Bone because I enjoyed that book to that middle book more than I enjoyed A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire even though both really disappointed me. So that one goes to Nora Roberts which surprised me. If you asked me at the start of this would Nora Roberts make it past any round? I would say probably no. Um, our next our next matchup is Air Awakens by Elise Kova versus Notes from a Dead House by Fyodor Dostoevsky. Now this one is a easy one for me because I was kind of disappointed by Air Awakens. I 
didn't know if I really wanted to continue this series. I still don't. I own the whole series on Kindle, um, so I have it there if I want to continue. But I just kind of felt like it was in. Eh. I finished it, and I think I rated it three stars because it just felt. It felt like there was so much more that could be done with that book than was actually done. And yes, it was a debut novel. It was the first book in a series, so I gave Elise Kova that ass, um, that for it, but it ju I was just disappointed by it. Whereas Notes from a Dead House was such an amazing read. This was another um, buddy read with my friends Christy and Stephanie, and Una joined in for this one. We had a live show about it. And this book was just totally different than anything I've ever written, read before. Um, Dostoevsky basically, while he was a political prisoner, he took notes on all of the people that he met in prison and everything that happened in prison. And then after he was released, he wrote this book about it. So this is a fictionalized, kind of fictionalized memoir of his time in prison. And it was just so entertaining, so well written. His characters just felt like absolute real people. So this one goes to Notes of a Dead from a Dead House. And let's see, one, two, three. We have just four matchups left in round one. So our next matchup we have is Traitor's Blade, which is book one in the um, Great Coat series by Sebastian de Castiel versus Drums of Autumn, which is book four in the Outlander series by Danica Balden. So I absolutely loved Trader's Blade so much. I definitely want to continue that series. I just haven't gotten to it yet, but that is definitely on my list for 2022. Okay, this one is a hard one because I love Trader's Blade, but a lot of stuff, there's certain moments in Drums of Autumn that I absolutely loved. Um, I think this one I'm going to give to Trader's Blade because I loved the book as a whole more than I loved the book as a whole in Drums of Autumn. There was a lot of parts in Drums of Autumn that I could have done without, whereas I couldn't really, I didn't really want to do without, except for like one chapter, which is a really weird chapter in Trader's Blade. All the rest I wanted more of. So this one I'm going to give to Trader's Blade. Next up we have... An Echo in the Bone, which is book seven in the Outlander series, up against Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers, which was just an absolutely amazing love story. That one had me sobbing and sobbing and sobbing, and that was life-changing at the time. An Echo in Bone is, let me see, what I liked most in An Echo in the Bone um, was we get some of our characters delve into the science of the time travel and I really enjoyed seeing that because you don't see that a lot in fantasy or science it made it feel more like science fiction than fantasy um, and I really liked seeing that aspect of it however if I had to put it putting it up against redeeming love for me just feels like I can't go against Francine Rivers because this book was just so incredibly well written so moving I was crying through half of it so this round will go to redeeming love we have just two more matchups in round one and these ones are easy ones for me because these are some of favorites first up we have the hot king which is book three in the books of Babel series by Josiah Bancroft up against A Promised Land by Barack Obama. So book three, we follow our main characters, our gang throughout the Tower of Babel and their journeys to rescue Mara and to take down the quote, Hod King and Marat, who's the villain, one of the villains in this story. And I absolutely loved this book in this entire series and this author so much. Josiah Bancroft became an autobi author for me and this round goes to the Hod King because as much as I enjoyed, um, I listened to the audiobook of A Promised Land which Barack Obama read himself. I enjoyed seeing all of the different aspects of his presidency and I learned a lot. It cannot compete with the books of Babel. By far, the Hod King wins this round. And then our last 
matchup of round one, the book battle of 2021 is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Maas, book one in the Akatar series, up against Dead Woman Scorned, which is book two in the um, Patience of a Dead Man series by Michael Clark. This one goes to Dead Woman Scorned easily because that book just blew my mind completely. It was totally different than anything I had ever ever read even completely different than book one and Akatar A Court of Thorns and Roses I was I enjoyed it but I was disappointed and I actually enjoyed book two a lot more than I enjoyed book one so this final matchup of round one goes to Dead Woman Scorned by Michael Clark hey y'all so I thought I was done but it turns out I didn't scroll down the screen far enough to find I found some more matchups that were missing from the first round so continuing round one we have the lost queen versus feet of clay and this one is a hard one because I really enjoyed feet of clay but man the lost queen was such an amazing book it just blew me away and that cover y'all is gorgeous so I think for this one, I'm going to have to give it to the Lost Queen, but this one was so close. This was like, in American football terms, this was like, Peter Clay lost by a field goal. It was so good. Um, but yeah, Lost Queen just had, just, yep. Uh, our next matchup is not close at all. The People We Keep, I enjoyed this story, but it also kind of left me feeling... Eh, it was good, but it wasn't great. Um, this was a book of the month pick, and, you know, it felt fine. But this is up against Jade City, which just completely blew my mind. And I just finished the second book in that series, which also blew my mind. So this one is hands down to Jade City. Uh, the next up, next up we have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Um, Schwab up against the fiery cross which is i believe outlander book five um, now this one is a hard one for me um because i really loved henry in the invisible life of Addie larue he was so special to me but i've got to give this to the fiery cross because this is one of the what i think are the better outlander series books in the series um, so this one, I think, goes to the Fiery Cross. Next up, we oh, this is another easy one because it's one of my favorite books in my, one of my favorite series. We have The Kite Runner by Khalid Hosseini up against Senlin Ascends, book one in the Books of Babel series. This one goes to Senlin Ascends, hands down, because Senlin Ascends was one of the most unique books I have ever read. And Josiah Bancroft is just dear. And The Kite Runner was a weird read for me. A very weird read. Um, we've got now, for real this time, we have two matchups left. Um, and these are going to be easy picks for me. We've got The Clan Lands Almanac, written by Sam, Sam Hewen and Graham McTavish up against Kings of the Wild book one in the band series by Nicholas Eames. As much as I loved, loved, loved the Clan Lands Almanac and that audiobook had me laughing constantly, I have to give this one to Kings of the Wild because Nicholas Eames is my boy and I just loved that book so much. I give it to anyone I can. I recommend it to anyone I can and it's just fantastic. And then our last matchup of round one, for real this time, is Anne of Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery versus Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. And this one is easy for me because Ariadne let me down. It disappointed me. It was just okay. It was just good. It wasn't great, but Anne of Green Gables is a staple, a classic, and near and dear to my heart. So this one goes hands down to Anne of Green Gables. So now for real this time, that was round one. 
come back again for another video with round two, maybe round three, depending on how long these videos last. But round one is definitely done in the books. I can't wait to see the matchups for round two. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you all for your support last year. It's been an amazing year on BookTube and I wouldn't be here without you guys. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, if you've read, which of these books have you read? Which of these books were your favorites in 2021? Would you, what results here would you have changed had you had do these matchups? Um, are there controversial matchups for you? Are there surprises? What were their surprises for you? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever I have a new video coming out, especially the next round for our book battles of 2021. As always, my Patreon and my Discord information will be in the description below. Come to my Discord and talk to me about what you see here. Tell me, let's talk through this and talk about our surprises. Um, my Patreon's only $1 a month and we have a ton of fun there. Keep reading and I love you all to the moon and back.